Okay, we are taking a look here today at page 192 in the Student Journal. It's section 7.1. Uh, our goal for today is to be able to solve problems involving inverse variation. We're also going to take a look at some direct variation. So when we're talking about these two types of variation, we're always going to have a constant of variation. And this constant is going to be called A. When we have inverse variation, we're going to have two variables, X and Y, that are related in this way. Y equals that constant divided by X. So therefore, as x increases, y will always decrease. That's one way to um, check if it might be inverse variation. The other way to check if our data might be inverse variation, well, actually to know for sure whether it is, is to look at the fact that if I multiplied both sides of this equation by x, I would get times x times x, I would get that x, y always is going to have to equal that constant of variation. That's another important thing to know about inverse variation, is that x and y always multiply to be the same value. For direct variation, we have y equals that constant times x. And in this case, as x increases, y increases. Or as x decreases, y will decrease. And in this case, if I were to solve for a, I would divide by x on both sides. So for this, a would always have to be equal to y divided by x. That's another good thing to keep in mind. For inverse variation, we also have to know that that constant cannot be zero. And that's because zero divided by any number is just zero. And if I had y equals zero, that's just going to be this line that's right on the x-axis. That's not direct or inverse variation. That's nothing. First example I have here is to give a real life example of direct variation. And one I could think of was buying t-shirts. And we're saying we're buying Lakota West t-shirts at $5 each. So just thinking about this, I'm going to say X is the number of shirts we buy, and Y is the price we pay. So if I buy zero t-shirts, I pay $0. If I buy one, I pay 5, 2, 10, 3 would be 15, etc. So you can see here that as X gets larger, Y gets larger. And that's an example of direct variation. If I wanted to come up with the equation for this, I can see that y is always going to be equal to 5 times x. This would be my constant of variation, that $5. See how that works? That times 5, that times 5, that times 5. So I would then know then that a would be 5 for all of these. If you look back here at direct variation, y divided by x always has to be equal to that constant. 0 divided by 0 we can't do, but 5 divided by 1 would give us 5. 10 divided by 2 would give us 5. 15 divided by 3 would give us 5. And so that's going to be our example of direct variation. All right, looking at example 2, um, we're trying to come up with an example of inverse variation. For inverse variation, we have y equals something over something else. So we have x and y. Um, for this example, we're saying that we're going to be driving 120 miles at different speeds. So we should also know that distance is equal to rate times time. And so therefore, we're going to let our r be equal to our um, x value. And we're going to say time is y. Distance, we already know. It's 120. So this would be the equation we would have. But I could also just divide both sides by x. All right, so this is kind of what we're keeping in mind here. But we're going to just use common sense. So if I'm going to drive 120 miles, and let's say I'm going 20 miles an hour the whole time. That'd be awful. But if I'm only going 20 miles in an hour, it's going to take me six hours to go 120 miles. If we go 30 miles in an hour, if that's our rate, then how many hours is it going to take us? Four. Going 60 miles an hour, well, if we go 60 miles in one hour, it's going to take us two hours to go 120. And so you can see here, as x is increasing, y is decreasing. You can also see that y value is always equal to 120 divided by x. 
So we also would be able to see that the constant, that rate of change of that constant, x times y would always have to equal 120. See that? How they always multiply to be 120. And that's from this up here with inverse variation. If y equals a over x, then a is going to be x times y. All right, let's go over to the next page. Um, we're going to come back to number one. I want to do some other ones first. So remember again that if we have direct variation, it's going to be y equals ax. If we have inverse variation, it's going to be y equals a divided by x. So for this one, if I look at it, see how it exactly matches this. y equals a over x. So this is obviously inverse variation. Looking at this one, this is not either one of these two forms. This is going to be neither. Again, neither. Doesn't father, fa follow either form. This one, though, this is really y equals 4 fifths is 0.8. I can think of it like this, y equals 0.8x. It follows this form. This is going to be direct. This one, neither. This one is the same thing as y equals 1 seventh x. That's equivalent to this. What do you think it is? Direct. The x is actually in the numerator, see? This one, if I solve it for y, I'm going to get 0 divided by 6x, so that's just y equals 0. That's neither. We already said that we can't have y equal to 0. It has to be equal to either ax or a over x. This one, if I multiply both sides by 9x, I want to get into that y equals form. So y would equal 9x. Now you should be able to see that that's direct variation. Back to this one. If I solve this one for y, I would divide both sides by 3x. So this is really y equals 1 over 3x. And it kind of feels like it could be this one, and it is. Here's why. I could really divide this by 3 and this by 3. So this is really the same thing as y equals 1 third over x. I wouldn't want you to write it that way, but if you needed to see what the a value is, you can now see that the a value is going to be 1 third. Okay, so this is inverse variation. Just because there's a uh, constant down there with the x, it doesn't matter. All right, for number 10, we're trying to see if we have direct or inverse variation. So on this, we can see that as x is increasing, y is also increasing. So we might be thinking it's direct. The other thing if it's direct is that it has to meet this form, y equals ax. So let's see if it does. So we would also say, well, to get this y, what do I multiply that by? 2. So to get this y, do I multiply that by 2, etc.? No, it doesn't work, does it? So therefore, this does not work being direct variation. Another thing we know is that a would have to be equal to y divided by x. Just dividing both sides by x. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 36 divided by 6 is 6. We're not getting that same constant every time. So therefore, it's not direct. It's neither. For number 11, x is increasing, y is decreasing. That makes us think that it may be inverse variation. For inverse variation, y must be equal to a over x. Okay, so that means to get this y, it would have to be some constant divided by 1. It's kind of hard to think of it that way, so I can also say, what if I multiply both sides by x? Well, a would also have to be equal to x times y. So I have to get that same constant of variation when I multiply these numbers. So let's try it. 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times 1 is 5. 8 times 0.625. I'm going to grab the calculator for that one. 
five. Okay, that works. This is one fourth. I can do that in my head. Twenty times one fourth. That's five. Eighty times one tenth, or fifty. I'm sorry, fifty times one tenth. That's five. So every one of these, when I tested x times y, I got five. And so therefore, this will be inverse variation. All right, on this one, let's see what's happening. X is going up, Y is going up. All right, so it could be direct. To be direct, it would have to be Y equals AX. So in other words, A would have to be always be the same for every Y divided by X. So let's just check these quickly. 0.5 divided by 2. 0.25. Okay, let's try the next one. 1.25 divided by 5. So far, so good. This one you should know. That's going to work. That's going to work. 3 divided by 12 is 1 fourth. What about this one? You may not know it right off. All works. Okay. So because all of those y's divided by x were equal to that 0.25, not only do we know that a equals 0.25, but we also know that it has to be direct variation. All right, let's do some examples now of some other types. So number 14 says the variables x and y vary inversely. Use the given values to write an equation relating x and y. Then find y when x equals 5. Inversely. Inversely means that y must equal a over x. So if I want to find a, I just plug in. I'm going to plug in 3 for y, a I don't know, x is 6. So therefore, a is going to have to be 18. So now it says find y if x is 5. Well, here's my equation. a is 18. Okay, so this is my general equation for this. And now I just have to plug in 5. Okay, so that would be it. 18 fifths, that's all I can do with it. That's the answer when x is 5. All right, let's do this one now. So I know it's going to have to be y equals a over x. Let's see, y is 3 halves. a I don't know. x is going to be 10 ninths. All right, well, I have to multiply these two and multiply these two. So therefore, I'm going to have 2a is equal to 30 ninths. So 2a is going to be equal to, divide those by 3, 10 thirds. Multiply by a half. Okay, so then a is going to be 5 thirds in this case. So now I rewrite it. So it's going to be y equals a over x. And now I'm supposed to plug in 5 for x. So y will be 5 thirds divided by 5. So what I'm doing is divided by 5. So to finish this, I'm going to have to, if it's division, I'm going to have to multiply by the reciprocal. And so 1 third. So if x is 5, y would have to be 1 third. Okay? All right. Let's go down here. When temperature is held constant, the volume V of a gas is inversely proportional to the pressure P of the gas on its container. A pressure of 32 pounds per square inch results in a volume of 20 cubic feet. What is the pressure if the volume becomes 10 cubic feet? All right, we'll always go down, back and um, kind of use each sentence to find the information. The volume V of a gas is inversely proportional to the pressure. So that means V equals A over P. I'm not going to use X's and Y's, I'm just going to stick with V's and P's. All right, that's what the first sentence tells me. Second sentence, a pressure of 32 pounds per square inch results in a volume of 20 cubic feet. So 20 for the volume and 32 for the pressure. So I'm going to find that constant. 
20 times 32 is 640. All right, so I know my A. So now I know this formula. V equals always 640 over P. So now it says the pressure is going to be 10 cubic feet. So now V is 640 divided by 10. So that's going to be 64. And let's use the correct units. For volume, what are they using? Cubic feet. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, shoot. Hold on. That was wrong. It says, what is the pressure if the volume becomes 10 cubic feet, not the pressure? We're trying to solve for the pressure. Sorry about that. So we're going to plug in 10 for the volume, 640 over P. And so 10P equals 640. P is going to be 64. And now let's use the correct unit for the pressure. Pounds per square inch. Okay, just looking again, we're trying to find the pressure if the volume is this. So that way I was doing it the opposite, I was plugging in for pressure. That's wrong. Okay, last one. The time and days that it takes to harvest a field varies inversely with the number in of workers, of, of farm workers. A farmer can harvest his crop in 20 days with seven farm workers. How long will it take to harvest the crop if he hires 10 farm workers? All right, read the first sentence. The time and days that it takes to harvest a field varies inversely with the number of farm workers. Okay, done with that sentence. A farmer can harvest his crop in 20 days with seven farm workers. So days is our time, so 20 goes in for that. A. N is the number of workers. So we're going to get A equals 140. So that's what that told us. How long will it take to harvest the crop if he hires 10 farm workers? So I'm going to rewrite my equation. T equals 140 over N. N is the number of farm workers. So T is going to be 140 over 10. And so therefore, it's going to take... I'm going to write this out. It will take 10 farm workers 14 days. So notice it, it took 20 with 7, and then if we have 10, then it's only going to take us 14 days. Okay? All right, so that's inverse variation. Just again, remember... For inverse variation, it's y equals a over x. So therefore, x times y has to equal that constant of variation. Direct variation is y equals a times x. So therefore, a would have to equal y over x. You really only need those two because you can figure out those two.